Welcome back, everyone, to the Insomnia True Silver Championship, second edition. I'm it's Noxious. The Insomnia and, uh, 57. 50, 57, yes. I don't know why. I, 56. <laughs> it's ne never mind that. Champion. It is still a True Silver Championship, <laughs> though. So, um, yeah, there's that. So, that being said, uh, we just saw a cool match between Super JJ and Life Coach. Life Coach did some druid things, and JJ couldn't handle it. Because yeah. uh, who can, really? The right. pressure was just too high. Innovate, wild girl, what can go wrong? <laughs> yeah, like, you can't do anything against that kind of play. So, uh, he was pretty close, though. If the Boombot had missed the Juggler, I feel like the game might have been extended a little bit longer, but uh, it was a great game nonetheless. And JJ still has a chance to come back in this, uh, for the top 16, uh, through the top 16, through the top 8. It's not impossible, it's just gonna take him, you know, beating his next opponent. Yeah, uh, but Dog is first default blood, I would say. Yeah. He, that's his last chance, right? Yes, that's it. If Dog doesn't win this, there's no, there's nothing waiting for him in order to come back. Yeah, exactly. So this is his last chance. He has to be confident uh, during this game. And JG comes from, I would say, quite a disheartening loss. Right. right. Yep. So um, he needs to shake that off and be at the top of his scale as well. Yeah, right? I think with JJ, though, he's got the experience, right? You know, this is definitely not his first tournament or anything like that. So I think he'll be OK. Uh, but what I'm really interested to see is actually like two rogue players um, oh, yeah, in terms of, th they're both bringing Rogue, but also they love Rogue, both of these right. guys. So it'll be really cool to see them face off against each other and see how uh, how these uh, lineups go. So we do see two, the two Rogues there. We see the Mage and the Warrior from Dog. No, and Druid! The, <laughs> and the Warlock and the Paladin from JJ. So this what is going to be a nice cast, What guys. is this? <laughs> what, how did they get here? Like, what <laughs> went wrong? I'm guessing Dog might have decided to bring something like a Tempo Mage to the array because it beats Paladin and to some extent. Uh, sometimes uh, it'll do fine-ish, depending on how it's built. And you've got the ability to be Druid, of course, which is probably the most popular class in the event. So, well, it's okay. They, they were allowed to be at this stage of the tournament without the Druid because they could have changed, changed their decks. Changed their decks. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, so they did, yeah. And this is the, the loser's round. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that, should, that says a lot about, uh, about yeah, the decks. But uh, one of those players will be advancing to the next stage, to day three. So I'm not sure if they can change the decks for day three. No, they can't. No, they can't. No, they're they're locked, locked, now it's locked. Player right. without a druid in day three, and that's, that's unheard of. So, yeah. so do we all just on the side just want whoever wins this to win the whole tournament? Pretty much. Because like, there's just no druid in the line. I guess, I guess Lothar may be biased, but I'll be biased too yeah. because my Super JJ from Complexity does not have a druid. So I've got the edge there. Um, I'm hoping <laughs> JJ takes it. Again, it's going to be a pretty big thing for him since he you know, pretty much only has one big title to his name, Seed Story Cup. Uh, and that is something he wants to add to his roster. Just an Insomnia win would be big. Yeah. And also, by the way, uh, Doc was complex these players as right, well. Right, he's gone though. Traitor. <laughs> well, straight in with that, yeah, but he's not Yeah, he's all. done oh, now. He's, That's it. He's out. Yeah, but I still uh, I still think Dog and uh, JJ are two of my favorite players just because they've stuck to Rogue throughout pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. And there's not that many players that have been bringing it as consistently as they have. Yeah, that is true. I mean, when you ask a Rogue player, is he favorite? against a certain, you know, other deck. Yeah. They always favored yeah. against every other deck. Yeah, so. I mean, if the cards line up, it is true. But, <laughs> you know, I, I guess it's just that it feels like you've got more flexibility in the way you play Rogue, and it's easier to, like, your tools are flexible, which makes them, to an extent, look like they can win you any game against any club. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if you asked a, a diehard Rogue player, so can you beat Control Warrior that gets perfect removal every turn, has two Uzis and a Harrison? and gets the true, uh, true Heart on curve, they'll still be like, yes, sure, we Probably. can win. Yeah, I can still win this. All right, so Dog is going to be queuing up his uh, mage. Looks like Tempo from what I saw, and JJ has the Secret Paladin. Uh, might be a bit of a different type of list because it might play a bit slower than some of the usual Tempo lists, but we'll see. I was just wondering, why would you mulligan away an unstable portal? Um, maybe you're looking, is there a two drop you're looking for that is Maybe Mad Scientist hard? I don't know. I think one of the things as well is like he know, uh, he's presuming, or no, he'll know actually this is Secret Paladin. Right. And he wants that guaranteed early board. Whereas if you portal into something time mana, even with the reduction the portal gives, if you can't play it till turn five, then you've just done, you know, you've done nothing really. Right. You know, you've got that good to go later, but it doesn't give you anything instant. I mean, if you portaled into like, even like a mini bot, then yeah, that's pretty damn good <laughs> versus the Paladin but. If you get anything late game, it's going to be a struggle. So mm -hmm. might be the only reason. This is going to be an interesting turn, actually, because the Secret Keeper is a very threatening card in itself, even though it doesn't look too too good as a 1-2 at the moment. It really can't escalate out of control. It, it has to be dealt with. Yeah, it's exactly. So I'm now wondering, does he 
just hope for the you know the odds on the arcane missiles here, or does he just go flame cannon and just uh, get rid of it? I think it's just the flame cannon turn yeah. because you can uh, be mana efficient on turn three with the arcane missiles and tank if you need yeah. it, right? Or yeah, I think against a deck like Paladin, you'll find targets for that. Yes, yeah. and. Um, Especially the flame cannon goes lower into like the value of the flame cannon goes lower as the game progresses because you have the tokens from Massive Battle, you have the pure power from the mage, you have the hunted creepers that will bring, you know, yeah, more in this really matchup as well. Yeah, there's so many low tokens for the flame cannon. So definitely a good choice. So liquid dog stacking up the removal. I mean, this is pretty much. The mo one of the most removal heavy hands you'll find in the tempo major early on if you don't have the mana worms and sorcerer apprentices. So uh, mm. it, it almost feels like he's going to be playing the control game for a long time. The Mad Scientist is a really great pickup here, I think. Yeah, I don't know what secrets he's playing. We haven't seen any show up yet. Mm -hmm. That's true. The liquid dog that sounds so funny. Yeah, like you just put him in a blender. Yeah, you can you can fit. <laughs> oh, in a that, so it <laughs> works. Wow! wow. <laughs> Liquify a dog. Oh god, yeah. that is awful. Next step is just to bottle him, and that's what it. Is. So it looks like uh, JJ is simply going to pile on too much pressure for uh, for dog to handle right away. Now, one of the things that I have to wonder is whether or not this is going to be counterspell. Um, Wow, okay. Even with counter spell, that I is think that's still a turn for the Flame Waker. I might wait, just because the you problem is if Low Step comes out, you're dead. The thing is, right now you have, <laughs> like, you're missing out on the opportunity to play maybe three spells if you wait one turn to play the Arcane Blast with the double missiles. So on turn six. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think here like Flame Waker double Arcane missiles is fine. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah. It, it just plays everything. You know everything else feels too slow. I think that Low Step is the best option, right? Because you play around. Turn five challenger. Assuming it gets coined out, yeah. Yeah, but you know your opponent has a coin. Yeah. So yeah. You play around a uh, an assist challenger will, will be a massive drop on this turn, and also it's very important to kind of bait out more minions for your opponent, and you do that by playing Lota because your opponent can play spells that on the only other possibility yeah, because they can play are basically minions or a hammer, right? And that's about it. Oh, Belch is a pretty nice pickup, but he is going to go for the juggler. Mainly because I imagine he's going to trade this creeper straight into the uh, into the low step. And what this did as well, this kind of played around uh, mirror entity. So he could play the juggler. If it was mirror entity, then he could just kill it quite easily. Whoa! So keep Duplicate! It. Duplicate! All the low thebs. Now I feel like maybe that flame waker was very appealing. But again, you had to deal with that yeah. turn six yeah. challenger. Um, and you don't have too many more spells that will cost you one mana in hand after you've exhausted this one. Is everyone ready for the pings? This well, will I be a Disco Inferno. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also, oh, flame on! <laughs> I think you play the Arcane Missiles first here, because if it's Avenge, you proc an Avenge and then want to Arcane Blast that target, right? Yeah, to guarantee the hit. So this is just, uh, it's a small thing, but good sequencing from, from Dog there, just to play the uh, correct minion first, uh, the correct spell first, sorry. Yeah. And look at Dog, by the way. Ooh. Well, that's well, still bad. five. You got this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And here we go. Right. <laughs> Done. Now you have two low devs. Just. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, and he's got the conjurer to find a spell that he absolutely needs. Something like a polymorph, polymorph boar, polymorph cheap. Uh, whichever one of these. What a great happens. turn! You can get a third low tab. <laughs> if that happens, that will be awesome. Do you, do you, you guys can play both. Do you guys actually like Lothep here? Because I imagine towards a fireball. It's awesome. Uh, it's I like awesome it. because you know that the opponent wasn't able to play two cards to the left um, from his hand. I mean, he chose not to, to play two cards from his hand, and one of that was a coin. So it was actually great, great to yeah. play another. Incidentally, ball. here he also picks up a three drop yeah. to play immediately. So very good uh, portal for Don. Hmm. Well, well, well. Um, the coin K Ren would have been awesome. Right. He could actually uh, kill the 3-3 three, three and then um, keep of Alderman his Belcher again uh, to buff it back up if he wanted to go that route. But it looks like he's just going to actually just kill off that Flame Wake. He's just seen the havoc that has been wreaked in the past turn or so from that card. So it's pretty reasonable that he wants to get it just uh, taken away from the board. Uh. Who's the Paladin now? <laughs> yep. There will be one ones on both sides. And look, another Lothar. How is that even possible if someone just killed him? You know? That is absolutely yeah. insane, though. JJ's in a really tough spot. So the deck that the Dog is running is uh, 
it looks like a typical tempo deck, but the duplicates really add a bit more value to some of those mid-game plays that you otherwise... Yeah, you'd starve for cards very often in a deck like this. Mm -hmm. um, and that's pretty much <laughs> the reason it's been... Uh, like, it's been changed from what it used to be. So, now we can just deal with Tyrion instantly with one of the fireballs and deal 10 damage to the face, which leaves your opponent at 9 health. So, a top deck Frostbolt. Yeah, and, uh, and also importantly, the, the weapon from the Tyrion isn't really going to do much. Because oh, normally, normally you want to trade, but when you trade into five fives with a, when you're on nine health, maybe not the best play. Yeah, probably not. Probably not a good choice. Yeah, Master of the Battle, a dead card in hand right now. The Belcher with a redemption. Uh, like if he had. Do, does he actually have to redemption coin bless the kings on the Belcher and run the 3 1 into the 3 2? So you guarantee the redemption on the Belcher? I'm pretty sure that's yeah. the only yeah. play you've got, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's the only play you have. Yeah, this is pretty nice, actually. It's putting up a very big wall that was uh, probably uh, quite unexpected, and then to go into the Redemption as well. But still, you're dead to just a Fireball. Oh, sorry, a uh, Frostbolt. Yeah, let's see what yeah. Dog picks up, though. There's a chance he doesn't find the uh, the card he's looking for, and in that case, he's going to be forced to trade away his entire board. Oh, a little bit more damage, a little bit more digging, but you might just pick up a Pyroblast. Or a Polymorph. Why not? Polymorph Boar. Another duplicate gets some more load deaths. Ice Barrier is not even that bad. When These three are amazing, I think. Mirror but Image, mirror is, image is better. Because like. no, almost no Paladin plays um, Consecration anymore, right? So basically the Mirror Image gives you two counters for 10 HP because of the weapon. Right, so and also he can quite easily, if he really wants, play the uh, Azure Drake this turn. And then just go Antonidas mirror image for like guaranteed, no matter what happens, leave till the following turn. But it's 12 damage coming from the from the Belgian if you're not trading no taps now. I mean, if you play mirror yeah, image and you don't yeah. trade, then Consecration would end up dealing 14 damage to you, right? So it's close Yeah, enough. that's true, yeah. You might be very, exactly like a little bit cautious uh, with the way you play this out. So is there anything that uh, JJ finds? Because it feels like, even though he's behind on oh, board, it wouldn't take hand. all that much. Like, a Consecration wipes the board, he keeps the slime. No, Almost. He's going to be, like, one damage short. A noble Sacrifice is not going to do too much. It's going uh, to stop, like, make Lethal a little bit more difficult, because it is quite minion-based at the moment. And Dogger uh, doesn't even have any burn in hand, and not even a, a spell to prop with that Archmage Antonidas to gain an additional Fireball for next turn, either. Yeah, JJ recognizing this 5 attack weapon is cute, but it's unfortunately not quite enough. Uh, we'll see what, end up, what Dog does in a position like this. I mean, I don't mind the uh, just a Drake play where you draw and ping to kill the Belcher. But you like like don't Antonidas know what that secret is. Well, he's going to attack in no matter what, right? right? So we'll find out what that secret is no matter what, because I don't think there's a world in which you don't attack here. So you just Frostbolt face after Yeah, I think you, just, uh, you attack, see that it's Noble Sacrifice, and Antonidas Frostbolt face, you yeah. have lethal next turn. There's no way you can heal up unless somehow... Yeah, well, you can't attack with the True Silver right. either, so like that's why I think you just go Frostbolt face, because he knows it's not Competitive Spirit, which is the key one, because that's the one that gets him in a, bit, in a bit of trouble with all these tokens down. It's still not enough damage. What do you think about it? It's only plus it four... It's not enough. And if you frostbolt the face. Yeah, even with Blast of Kings, it wouldn't be, yeah. Yeah, and, and you frostbolt the face just to avoid the damage from the from the weapon, yeah. right? So it's not really that important. It's just win the game instead. And that is nothing helpful for JJ. Yeah, this doesn't look good. The Paladin. Yeah. And it's going to be a concede from JJ is there's no way to heal and definitely no way to give himself lead. Now, I want to talk about Dog's mashup with this mage against the Malagos Warlock. It's not something that I've seen too much of. Uh, and I think JJ is one of the few, maybe like the only one who brought Malagos Warlock. Maybe two people did. Uh, it's not a very common deck that we've seen in the event. I just don't know how it lines up against the mage. I'm thinking about it. Uh, the Arkham Bless are kind of useless, I would say. They only kill the Dark Peddlers. They help maybe with... Um, in between bosses to finish them off after a mad scientist trade, but that's about it. Still, one one remains, right? Uh, the Ar the Arkan missiles are not helping at all. Right. It's a very interesting matchup. Yeah, I, I think on the on like the flip side of that, because I actually kind of like the tempo mage here because you have cards like flame cannon, as we can see. You have a lot of removal for these like bigger minions there. The Maligos warlock uh, 
uh, plays. So things like the uh, Blackwing Corruptor and things like that, you can remove fairly easily. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you're just too fast for the Malibu slot. I can see that. They, can, they normally take like, quite a while to get going and just rely on those mid-range minions to pressure. And the Temple Mage can actually just deal with them quite well, I feel. But we are going to go into Temple Mage versus the Rogue this game. And again, pretty decent opening from Dog. I think probably didn't want to see the Mirror Entity in hand, especially because he does have a Mad Scientist. But still, not, not completely terrible. Because he might just want to go the route with the, with the duplicate, right? And he might get an example, let's Drake. say, or the Sorcerer's Apprentice, which sure. is awesome yeah. to have with the double... Um, double degrees of the mana, uh, mana cost of, of every single spell, which makes a very efficient turn with, for example, Antonidas or the Flame Wave, which does an insane, does that deal insane amount of damage, right? Yeah, so it's, um, it, it, you can do that kind of combo with the Duplicate, definitely. What's going to be interesting is if the Mirror Entity actually gains him one of the rogue minions, then he duplicates off yeah, that. Which yeah, is gonna that's be, true. Which is going to start going really strange. Especially something like a Tomb Pillager, maybe. Or even, like as we can see, if there's a... Uh, because there's no real minion you can play this turn, this looks like it could well be in his Yord Drake next turn that he's going to give his right. opponent. And then he gets to duplicate. And when a Tempo Mage can cycle as well as put some spell power on the board, it seems pretty good. Yeah, we just have to know, though, if Dog is going to, like, let JJ give him a minion or if he's going to try to force him to give him apprentices, right? Because you can't let that little 3-2 live, but unfortunately, yeah. if you remove it in this case, you know full well there's a duplicate among these two secrets. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So the Azure Drake is not looking good next turn because you just use the backstab, right? Yeah. So you can't trigger the duplicate beforehand. And then it's still not great against the Azure Drake. Maybe it was wise to keep the Mad Scientist on the board and play the Azure Drake with the backstab next turn to kill the Azure Drake that was being spawned right. by the Mirror Entity. I can see that. Yeah, it makes sense. Because in that way, you're basically... Oh, he's actually going to set up the oil weapon just to make sure that the Drake he plays yeah. is going to get answered. And I love exactly. that play. I yeah, that's, that's really nice, actually. And he's just going to have to make a call on what, yeah, what he wants to actually duplicate here. Because the Sorcerer's Apprentice is going to come down with... Oh, hang on. Does he actually just Frostbolt this turn? Now? This is what I wanted to yeah, say. Yeah, I wanted, yeah. to, I wanted to, to wait till you finish the sentence, but I just wanted to say that if Dog sees the plan, sees the plan, uh, just knows what is the plan for for Ju Super JJ, he can go for just the uh, for just the Frostbolt and Unstable Portal and play around the Mirror Entity Azurdrick. Right, with right. the board clear that comes with it. Awesome, insanely good to play. Unfortunately, he doesn't go for it. Because also, you wouldn't even have to think that, like, oh, he's got an Azure Drake. If you think Tomb Pillager, SI7 Agent, uh, Gadget's and maybe, you know, like, all the minions are probably going to die to this weapon, actually, that, that uh, he's going to mirror entity into. So, it <coughs> excuse me. That's a new choke. It wouldn't have been uh, too bad of a play whatsoever. I would have kind of liked the Frostbolt, because he has so much follow-up as well. Um, he has uh, another... Arcane Intellect and a portal if he wants. He can just go straight into the Conjurer. So I would have liked that play, but maybe he's just like, well, you either now have a choice between letting me potentially do crazy stuff with the Apprentice if you leave it alive, or you kill whatever you give me. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree completely with that. So a preparation would be pretty sweet here, right? Like if you can get to prep uh, like a flurry, would you do it? Because you would give him Inst Apprentices. Instant, you right. have to do it. Yes, I think so. That is not the prep, but still, he does get to choose what he wants to give to his opponent. I, I really doubt uh, you'd give apprentices. They the opponent are way too cheap and too powerful. Oh, wow, is he just going face? Okay, so he's going to go face because he has Blade for your next turn. And um, what was, I was going to say was I felt like the Azure Ouch. Drake was the, be was the better minion to kill and duplicate because the opponent's got so, so many cards in hand that the cycle won't really matter too much because they're playing five mana to cycle sure. card. Yeah. I mean, just look at that. This Seven, is 11, 14, 18 damage this turn if everything goes to the face. I would say you might play the unstable portal first, see what minion will you get. Maybe it's spell power as Jungle well. Moonkin. <laughs> oh <my. laughs> that would be yeah. nasty. Please. Let's not, let's not make that happen. You still get decent trades by playing for the board, but you are extending into Flurry, and coming from an, ex like an exceptional rogue player the dog is, I want to say uh, this is not at all what I anticipated. Yeah, not at all. I mean, if, if there would be a backstab just to kill the pilot each other, it's not that it makes no sense. Yeah. Never mind. But um, I would say that the, the, the burst damage was so appealing. Yeah, right. I, think, I think this could still be okay, though, because if the Flurry comes down, he gets the Sorcerer's Apprentice Back. doubled up. 
Smart well, then next mage. turn he can still do like double sorcerer's apprentice and do silly things as well. Uh -huh. So I don't think it's too terrible. And what he's done here is the frostbolt went onto the Drake because if blade flurry happens, which we can see uh, comes down now, then a frostbolt face does nothing. You can still blade flurry if you froze him. So he does take the two uh, apprentices. He gets the two three off the uh, the shredder, which is okay. It's going to get cleaned up by the deadly poison. But now Doug has a, a lot of options, especially because he's on coin as well. Yeah. He still has that <laughs> coin with Apprentice, which means, you know, that's actually a two reduction for a spell if he really wants. That what is a pretty that odd. Is, that actually option. changes things. What if you just play Apprentice, coin, low tab, and... I might wait. Uh, do you mean with the Archmage to get, like, the follow-up turns? Um, but if you do that, then I think you have to wait one turn to pull the trigger on the entire sequence. Otherwise, you'll be low on mana for the uh, the Archmage. This is a type of deck that can pull off the Exodia, right? Like the infinite fireballs. The reference. Yeah, I think the um, I think the problem here is is if he drops an Apprentice now, it is just going to get killed by the weapon, I think. I don't think he can really leave that. If it's followed up by the Lothab, of course. Because mm -hmm. um, I don't really think he can leave an Apprentice up, and he's not got a really great way to kill the Lothab. And then sapping a Lothab as well, even though he has the mana for it, definitely not something you want to do. But if you get, I guess, the uh, the apprentice to be attacked by the weapon, you're still in a position where the rogue doesn't have a flurry follow up. It's guaranteed yep. that if there's a second one, it's never gonna be uh, it's never gonna be coming up. So rogue is going to a dangerous place. Yeah, this is very scary if you're JJ. Sixth in health is not that bad. Oh, <laughs> no, well, why not? Apprentice. No. Oh my god. Let's just god. top deck some silly damage. That Arcane Intellect could literally. Oh my god. You know what we need here? Unstable Portal into Apprentice. You oh, can start with that, dog. <laughs> oh. Please, please. I oh my god. This is insane. <laughs> Frost oh, please. for your mana. I mean, use the unstable first. portal yeah. first. Do you it. have to portal first because we don't have to, but you, you might choose the fireball. That's the Munken. Okay. Oh. Crack. That's nice. That's pretty good. That's pretty good Base damage. damage, as it turns <laughs> out, does work out for the dog. That's a six mana Cochrane Elite. Yeah. Wait, is it a six mana, what is it? Six mana nine seven that plays Eviscerate. Yeah, not, yeah, not too bad. Yesterday. Yeah. The Nefarian uh, Eviscerate play. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So um, basically, the fireball will take care of the, um, the belcher. The rose bolt will freeze your opponent's face and just can arc and missiles this turn. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I don't mind this because it, this just guarantees the five damage from the low. Maybe if you arcane missiles and whiff, you have. Still well, he wants to keep the arcane missiles for archmage. Right? That's true. But you still had. Oh, never mind. Yeah, yeah scratch that. And he also has just four damage. He has what seven damage from hand now. Just with the, the just with the Kraken and the missile, right? So I think a sprint, uh, like a hail mary sprint. Yeah, I, I'm actually trying to think what he can even draw. Yeah. Like, does he does he have to Double. tap the low tap? Like, is that gonna be a sap Edwin trade? Wow. Yeah, I think he has. Yeah, yeah, he has to, because there's no way he could have even sprinted into anything that would have helped him clear as well as this. Well, good luck. <laughs> Oh, uh, another unstable portal? JJ's rogue is he, not he working He can just out win the... if all the missiles go face. We can try first, right? Yeah, I mean... It's zero if, mana. If it's like just... If you can just win with the art, like the, the effect from the missiles, then why not play it? Like, are you going to lose the game if you play missiles? And if you well, go to so. Edwin, you just finish it off with the Kraken. Kraken, yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. And you will still have mana for the unstable portal, so maybe you unstable portal first. Well, no, because you need you need the oh, I suppose yeah, yeah. but no, because you need the ping, right? You need the ping to finish him if it goes all goes face. Yeah, but the, you don't have to play the kraken if everything goes straight. Uh, what I mean, what I meant is when you trade with the Edwin. Yeah, yeah, after that, yeah. Just like if if you went uh, okay missiles now, you need to go first. <laughs> oh, the oh, oh spell yeah. damage is coming up, oh unbelievable. Yeah. Look at that. That is. That has been an interesting game. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to oh, see okay. what he did there, but but yeah, and uh, the thing is here, like he doesn't need to trade into the Van Cleef because Lothar pretty much locks out any additional yeah. damage. That's so true. he's not fearing for his life on 21 health on a Lothar turn against the Rogue. So this is going to be really rough. Another sap's going to come down onto the Ogre, uh, stop that spell damage coming down at least uh, at least for next turn, or really stop the four damage coming out. But this is looking very very rough. That's all. AJ, over. And it's just first going time. to be game. This is the first time I see a Kraken ends a game in a competitive environment. 
I think you're right. Uh, the, the few times you end up seeing... Uh, JJ just, <laughs> he's just like, yep, just got crack into the face. That, that's a blast of ease. Yeah. I mean, it could have been a Nightblade. Yeah, uh, it could have been a, a number yeah. of charge minions as well. Don't ruin the farm, man. That Don't wouldn't be as cool, much as... <laughs> he just got oh, splash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, water pump. Is that the uh, hydro, hydro pump? Hydro, hydro, hydro pump, hydro pump was, was the Splash was a Maggie Carp, right? God, that That's ability. <laughs> it's, not, oh, it's not super pump. effective. <laughs> <laughs> I have a fishing pole. <laughs> Wait, this isn't what I wanted. An old rod. <laughs> oh. A one million dollar bike. <laughs> Worth it. Yeah, well, worth every second. I'll give it for you. I'll give it for free for a coupon. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> like, you can't get this. Why? <laughs> it's a bike. <laughs> so it looks like JJ is going to be queuing up the only deck he's got left, Malagos Warlock. And this deck has a lot ahead of itself. If he wants to go through, it's going to have to go through the Mage and the Rogue and the Warrior. And that's going to be a bit difficult, I think. Yeah, especially we saw the, I think we saw the Mad Scientist there. There we go, in the yep. open hand. And also the duplicate means that it's guaranteed to be an entity, which makes JJ going to have an awkward few turns. He's got mm -hmm. two Twilight Drakes. In which Agreed. he probably doesn't want to drop into an entity. But you don't want to draw, drop the duplicate, right? So we are not aware how many secrets does um, Dog play yet, because we only did see... We've seen like one of each at any given yes. time, right? So yeah. it still might be three secrets. If it's three secrets and it's not two mirror entities, so there might be a chance that we have different secret than the mirror entity, right? Yeah. Um, but if I would say you don't want to play du duplicate into, a, into basically a mad scientist on board, right? right. So yeah, one exactly. of the one of the ways I think you win this matchup as uh, as JJ is trying to you know play those into those entities as effectively as possible and also make sure that you keep the uh, the brand bronze beer for that heal bot later in the game when your health is dipping low unless you can pick up a really crazy defender it's usually not worth it to pitch in the mid game. That's a good point. Yeah, I think uh, one of the other the, at least the benefits is uh, he could have looked at potentially going brand into the Twilight Drake, but as you said, it's like the extra health doesn't make too much of a difference. Right. You, you need the bigger impacts. May, maybe one of the other combos is like a Blackwing Corruptor to just like kill something with six health. Sure. Right? Like something like, like yeah. Low Thetter comes out late game. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like that, that's one of the other instances. But as you you know, you're completely right. The heal bot's probably going to be the highest impact overall in the game. All right, so now JJ's got to figure out what this secret is. He knows there's one of them on the board. He has no clue, of course, the dog's holding the duplicate. So as far as he's concerned, he's going to play the weakest minion he's got uh, into this. And that yeah. looks to be the M gang boss. He's got two BGHs, though, so... Yeah, this is tough, though, because even the gang boss, it sets up the Shredder to trade into the Twilight Drake right. anyway. Um, or even he could just trade into the gang boss and do something else uh, about the Drake or ignore it. So it's kind of rough. He is just going to go and tap and dart bomb. Kind of like this. If it's duplicate, then you don't care because he's going to have to spend a ton of energy trying to get those uh, those cards back into play over the next future. Yeah. Another Pokemon uh, reference. Yeah, that's very good. That's it. <laughs> We're done. Was that on purpose, not just? No, it wasn't. I didn't think so. <laughs> but good work. The low save's kind of good here, actually, because this sort of um, it just cuts out a mortal coil. From the Twilight Drake and a Mortal Coil. Sure. So that <laughs> seems pretty good. Unless there needs to be like an abusive in the deck to be able to do that. There are probably two, yes. Yeah. And you don't want to give double uh, double low tips to your opponent right now. And you're yeah. not sure which secret it is. Well, you know it's not duplicate because the. Uh the Shredder would have traded Yeah, he right killed away. the Shredder. Oh, yeah, right, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and, and he knows it's not counter spell, actually, because he played the Dart Bomb, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, That's he true. knows it's Duplicate, and this is really awkward, because he was on the receiving end of Duplicate Lothubs in a previous match, and he probably, especially playing Malilok, doesn't really want to give him that again. I like this play, though, uh, giving some of the, I don't want to say the weaker one, but it gives, uh, gives him the ability to trade into the minion, and then, based on the hand that he's got, should be able to handle the Lothub with the Drake and... Uh, it's oh wide on the god. board. That, however, oh my god. is a draw. That is just insane. Uh, is he gonna risk this? Uh, he's gonna frost bolt. If he plays the flame waker, it's a frost bolt turn. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, true. Uh, I was just instantly looking at the flame cannon. Like, you know, like ping flame cannon just seemed like really straightforward. And then the second he was like flame waker, I was like, what? Oh, oh no! Oh, oh no! That's a disaster. Disaster. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Abort mission. <laughs> I, I don't know if that was too greedy because he could have just pinged Flame Cannon on the Azure Drake and played Mad Scientist. I, I would have liked like that. that yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I thought. Curve, yeah, and that's why when he hovered over Flame Waker, I was like, wait. That's very aggressive. Yeah, it's just very greedy. Like, 
he doesn't even have like if he had something like fireball frostbolt in hand again you know like the second frostbolt mm -hmm. to try and just burst him down maybe but i don't know that that seemed like such a straightforward turn what's interesting though in this spot is that jj uh wants to kill both minions on the board at once but if he uses the corruptor to do that then he only gets to kill one of them so he's, he's got to pick what he wants to kill and i feel like both are just terrible for you right yeah he well he could mm, yeah okay yeah i'm trying to work out if there's a way you can actually silence off silence your drake the, right uh, and, and yeah. trade but you could play your twilight drake first the second one and then play your silence but you still can't kill the lotho yeah. at the end of that season. i think actually if you just play the twilight drake and uh trade the four one into the two four uh then you know is is the lotho doing that that much like you can't do much with two mana though uh, you can't really tap on this health either. No. This is yeah, really that's a awkward, good point. Actually. Very good really point about the life tap. Yep. Literally can't tap on uh, on this amount of health. So he's gonna go for the, I guess, biggest tempo play possible for himself and force Dog to basically clear out the entire board with nothing but a low tap. Dog will not be able to let that live. And that's six damage. So yeah. It doesn't not really quite help. There. Not quite there. So you can ping off the Azure Drake. Then you can flame cannon. Hope it hits. Yeah, I kind of like that actually. Because right. whichever one it doesn't hit, you just run the loaf into. Well, you have to kill the brand, right? Yeah. You cannot let brand live. Yeah, there's yes. there's almost no way. And again, like this heal bot is still going to do quite a bit of work, right? This uh, loaf being out of range of the M gang boss alone dies to the corruptor. Good for dog. And there's the final, uh, the abusive that JJ was looking for earlier. This is huge, because JJ can just pretty easily clear the board now. Yep. He can run uh, abusive onto the gang boss into the 4-4 and just use the corruptor to kill the 5-3. And, uh, and suddenly, like, Tempo Mage has the ability to burst, but with no minions in uh, on the board, it, it's a lot more difficult. It's not often that they actually just burst out of hand, especially from, like, a health like 17. And that sets up a really strong follow-up turn for JJ, where you can heal bot and then BG. Stabilize, like, right? Yeah, exactly. He'll just stabilize with the heal bot and be fine. We need to see, though, uh, what line of play he takes. There's many lines of play here, and this is what's fascinating about, the, I guess, Warlock decks that play a bit of a slower game. Uh, there's so many opportunities for you to pick a line of play that leads uh, a place no one else would go. Yeah, I think this is just very, very clean, though, and I'd have been a gen genuinely surprised if he picked anything else, eh? Because this turn is so clean and just removes everything off the mage side. And here we go My again. God. <laughs> Ma, I just awesome. wanted to Oh, no! <laughs> it's really, like, every single time I wanted to say that there's only one flame maker. There's only one. You should play this. Deck. Yeah, no and way. He, it's always being drawn. It's like, yep. it's such a great. It, and I'm not saying this is a, this is the turn when you play the flame maker, but it makes such a huge difference in the upcoming turns if you just wait with the flame maker and you just gather those spells. But it's right. Wow. No matter what happens here, though, like he will be in a great spot. Oh hi. Oh hi. What? Oh, <laughs> my I must say, this flame maker's got quite a taste for the face. I kind of like this as a backup, though. So if it didn't go to plan and he couldn't get the, like the, the clean, maybe the flame cannon off or anything, mm -hmm. he has the backup of duplicate because JJ will probably not want to ignore this flame maker. <laughs> but if he kills it, he gives him two more. So yeah. it's just a, it's just a safety net, isn't it? It's like if he messed up the uh, the shotgun hits from the flame maker, then you know he did have a recovery option. Which it's is a nice. double barrel, I would say. Exactly, yeah. Like a shotgun effect every time. It is pretty scary though, because right now you've got a flame waker. Yes, you're getting them back, but that represents six mana you'll have to pay in the future. And I don't know that you'll be happy to pay six mana to play flame wakers unless you've got apprentices to go with them and a bunch of one cost spells. Yeah, well, I, even looking at his hand though, like uh, he doesn't quite won't quite have the mana next turn, but he has other options in terms of his yard drake and the scientist. But he can like uh, flame waker, flame waker, portal, uh, flame cannon, for example, and that's actually just a, a lot of damage. A hell of a lot of damage, actually. That what's interesting too is that it will by the, if there's an attack from the uh, corruptor onto the flame waker, it lowers its health to one, which puts it exactly in range yeah. of the flame waker pings in the future. So, um, and also, he doesn't even have to play them both. Right. He'll play like one flame waker and maybe he's gonna the, silence it and ignore it. Nice, nice. I really like this play. Okay. That was uh, a that that is scary. So the fireball being able to deal here at all of six, seven, eight. So there, he's basically seven off. Hang on. So board. like, fireball top deck off. If Gazlo and Sorcerer's Apprentice are played, 
does cards like flame yes cannon they do proc because it's one mana yes they, yes, they do. you will get oh next. wow that seems that seems pretty reasonable there now let's next. see if dog is aware of that. yeah because i and, and the thing is that might make me make me sound bad as a caster but that's not an interaction you really come up with that often oh I dog is raising his hand i think there might be an issue with the connection or i don't know with what oh that's not looking good. Well, we'll see how it goes. Yep. Just have to get a word from the admins. Both players look like uh, something's happened across the board there. Yeah, maybe the monitor shut off. JJ looks dismayed. I think he was, uh, he's thinking, you know, I think I was winning this and... Yeah, J I, th I, think, uh, I think JJ was reasonably happy with, um, with, with the, the way it was going at that moment right. in time. Obviously, we could see there was a few options for, for Dog in terms of... Because uh, he had a lot of cards, actually. I, I think that was a fair game. It was yeah, still a very I think fair there, game. There was no one... There was no, like, lethal next turn. Yeah, no way. Like that. So we'll just... Uh, we'll have to just find out what's going on. Lisa, please take notes. Give, give us a good reconnection system. Right, Blizzard, if you're listening. <laughs> like, I don't know if you are. <laughs> like, I don't know if I, you I are. I can't quite tell if you are, but... Um, Okay, so it looks like there's an internet outage, so I'm not sure if we're live, but I guess we're just going to go to a break while we just uh, fix what's going on. So we'll, <laughs> we'll uh, fix we'll that. Awkward we'll stare, <laughs> number five. It's like, <laughs> we're just here. Yep, casually. Yeah, so we're going to a break, I guess. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Getting into the rematch now, so uh, interesting open hand already from JJ. Because uh, Malago's yeah. probably not going to stay around in this yeah, well, it's not bad. You mulligan away, and you have the guarantee you will not see it back. Yeah. So that's something. So you always go, go, go for the silver lining, right? The, the positives yeah. in any uh, yeah. scenario. But this mulligan really improved the hand. I mean, we're talking about a peddler opener. He's got the implosion to deal with some of that mid-game pesky stuff. Dog mulliganed away the uh, apprentice and the flame waker. Which is really weird to me. Yeah, I'm guessing he was looking for mad scientists very heavily. Uh, in order to get anything done, and probably thinks like rolling with the early game is not something he needs to do against this deck necessarily. Uh, he does want mana worms, I guess. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's true. I'm just yeah. thinking when it, when I evaluate his deck, he has so many dead cards right. that it can be just pushed into that opening hand by that aggressive mulligan, yeah. right? Oh my goodness! So if there is no flame cannon here, JJ's thinking I can get away with this, right? Um, and if Dog doesn't go for Frostbolt, Arcane Blast, he's going to get away with That's a double peddler, double abusive. This is really nice, though, because um, oh, he's actually going to get the abusive as well. So that's crazy. So what this does is it opens up. What he's trying to do was hope that he didn't get a Power of Worming or abusive from the peddler. So the Flame Waker survives and then punishes the brand. Right. But obviously, we can see he already had an abusive in hand. So it's still fine, and you can go in and trade pretty easily there. So that's uh, pretty grim, although it does mean that he can guarantee a kill with the Arcane Blast and the Flame Waker next turn, which is almost just going to snap play, because there's, there's yeah. no other decision to be made here, I don't think. Yeah. And the Double Coil is also pretty nice, as it means that any two-attack minion with the Double Coil will be able to trade into this guy. And uh, both Flame Wakers anymore. are lost now. Well, that's basically no Flame Wakers anymore, right? Yep. yep. There's All no chance gone. of having them. Oh, sorry. There might be still a Flame Waker from the Stable Portal. Oh, yeah, true. It can happen. Well, Cold of Cold seems... It's not Arcane Blast. I mean, I Arcane think... Explosion, but... What? Yeah, so the interesting one there was, like, Polymorph is actually okay versus this deck because it does play a lot of big minions, like mm -hmm. the Corruptors and even maybe Malagos if it gets to it. But the, the Cone of Cold is good now, and I think that's why he picked it. It just deals with a lot of these minions right now. Yeah, I think uh, good now is an understatement. <laughs> and this is a pretty decent turn. Dog gets to develop two minions, plays the Frostbolt, plays the Cone of Cold. Well, I think the pretty decent is portal. an understatement. Not right. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a pretty damn good turn. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I almost <laughs> think that you might not... Um, wow. Imagine that will actually deal two damage there. Oh. <laughs> 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 this would have been insane. Uh. All the freeze. Yeah, I really like this play from Dog. You know, not using the uh, Kona Cold on the 5-1, five, five um, giving yeah, it a little yeah, guarantee. Yeah. Some people might have been you know, tempted to just kill it, but in this case, it's uh, it was a clear misplay. You're running out of cards, so you have to play the Arcan and Klepnix, and most likely you will not play anything else, so we use the ping. The so Coil like hits for two. Juicy Coil. And the War Golem will be answered by the BGH if it's played. Uh, but it's still a pretty good <laughs> turn five with the Lothab and the Arcane Elect. Oh, he goes. Yeah, he has to go for the ping and commit into the 5-1. Yeah. 
because otherwise the uh, the fire one's just going to kill the low temp straight up, and you want to you know, make him work for it a little bit more than that. No abusive with that BGH. Yeah, and I think already we've seen uh, th this game, Dog's suffering a little bit by just the... Uh, he does have card draw, but he's just been able to try and actually play it. It's a tough one. Getting the intellect off and making it work is going to be difficult. Um, whereas if he has like a duplicate on board, that's what really helped in his previous matches. Uh, really just fill up his hand and give him way more options. Right, this is one of the big weaknesses, I think, of uh, Temple Mages, that nowadays they tend to run out of cards, and that's the reason why a lot of people have been cutting the second mirror entity in favor of duplicate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Big Game Hunter didn't have a target in this deck, unless it's the Dr. Boom. Yeah, Dr. Boom, no? I guess. And now then still Pokemon. Yeah, I think there might be a... Wait, wait, I think he missed Lethal. He had Power of Overwhelming plus Soul Fire plus Hellfire. It's 8, it's 14. 5, 6, 7. No, I, I missed... I missed. But Hellfire would have healed him. The, yeah, with the zombie oh, yeah. trial at the end right. of the turn. Yeah. I lied. You had to PO wow. it. No, you could PO it. You could what? Power oh, so of Power of Warm in the things that didn't die. Oh, yeah, right. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a very good point. So, was it the action before? Uh, he had 18 out of 21, I think. Yeah, never mind. He does have a mad bomber, though, and uh, there's, a, there's definitely a couple of targets this guy could oh, slide. Oh, nope. Did not pink, kill the pink. big game hunter. Yep, still pretty okay. He gets the scientist down, but the problem is, like, um, I imagine JJ is going to sequence these attacks if he wants to trade, where he just kills the Mad Bomber first, then kills the... Now, second. this is lethal, right? Wait, wait. Come on, someone, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's 8, <laughs> it's 11, 13, 17, 18. 18. Yeah. Yes, if you okay. play the PO on the zombie chow, yeah. this is... Yeah, if. Right. It has to happen. If oh, JJ he can silence the zombie chow. <laughs> you might, yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? Just One for, the, just for the, the swag play. Yeah, there yeah, here is. Here we go, JJ sees it. So, the game has been taken very convincingly compared to the other matches he's had to play against Dog. And that means that JJ gets a chance to maybe reverse sweep Dog if uh, his Malilaw can hold against the Rogue and the Warrior. Imagine Counter Spell right now. <laughs> no, <laughs> wrecked. <laughs> oh my god. Vaporize as Zombie Chow comes in. <laughs> <laughs> like, nice PO you got there. Oh my god, that oh, bad nice. sequencing. Um, yeah, so that's going to be the game that went pretty quickly, actually, compared right. to how long the previous game went. And uh, yeah, it does have the option uh, to switch to wa Warrior or Rogue against this uh, this Mali Lock. Uh, what do you actually think? Like, what, what would you go with if you were picking one of these decks? I'm tempted to say Rogue should be able to, uh, to put enough pressure. The issue that we're running into and that we've seen in the past is that the heal bots end up being a very big problem for Rogue when the uh, like when too many heals come up. And there's only so much you can remove with flurries against that deck. Yeah. Uh, yeah it definitely problem. provide a lot. Of, it's like a good amount for the Maligos lock. It's a good amount of actual minion pressure, as well as like board clearing, like just on on demand removal in the form of like dart bombs, the implosions, and things like that to deal with a lot of the uh, the rogue minions. It looks like he has gone for warrior. Whoa! And, and that guy likes his weapons. This is like that uh, WoW TCG deck you told yeah. me about, where you just with play the, weapons. With the 50 weapons in the deck. Yeah. <laughs> I hope he's got tentacles for hands, because this is not going to go well. Triple wield? Let's see. Nice. Yeah. Why it not? It would be nice. It would be insane. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things, though, that uh, we maybe, you know, it looks like the hand is terrible, and maybe we could view it that way. One of the things it does, though, is that it guarantees removal for the entire game, almost. And with that in mind, it means that he's maybe able to use his armor up a lot more frequently, giving him enough range to stay away from Maligos lethal. Yeah, and the thing is as well, like against Maligos Warlock, it's not, a, you know, Maligos isn't really the fastest deck in the world either. So, you know, maybe a slower start benefits it because it means he just, he's not just stuck with like an armor smith. He's just going to have in his yeah, hand. Like, just drop an armor smith turn two and do nothing against Maliloc. So now at least, you know, and already we're edging towards turn five. There's a Death Bite equipped. He's going to be able to more than likely clear up this this Twilight Guardian, and then he can do whatever he wants next turn. But Second Death Bite, Emperor Bash. Thorson, though. Why would you play... Uh, no, mind. I just was wondering, maybe you should play the Fear War X attack twice? So the one damage means that you deal with... I guess if an in-game boss had been played, you could bash it and then use your axe to... Yeah, well, I, I, I think there was... A, yeah, there's just a... Depending on the other draws, he could remove a, a minion a bit easier with that weapon. Mm -hmm. um, okay. 
But yeah, the Emperor Thorson and JJ's hand is going to hit the Soul Fire, a coil, two Dark Bombs. But not the and, Mortal and Coil that just got burned. It does not matter, <laughs> does it? But that is a huge reduction, actually, as you're saying. That's like all of the Maligos burst right there. Yeah. Double, that is double Dark Bomb and Soul Fire. And it even requires the. It, what's that? Is that 20. Fire. How much damage is that in one turn? Well, you have Dark Bombs, which is six, right? And that's then eight. Soul Fire, that's eight. So it's 16 was No, but you just add five to each spell. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just oh, add sorry, four sorry, each you spell, that way, right? you add out five. So you have six from the Dark Bombs, then you have four from the uh, Soul Fire, so you have 10 from that, and then you add 15 on top of that. Yeah. So yeah. that's 25 of just those three cards, right? And that's that scary. Yeah, but it's Warrior, so it is. it does take you a bit more than just spells to go through all that armor count. If you're going to play Zombie Chow, now would be the time just to whittle away at that armor a little bit. Yep, and it's only going to heal him for two, which you're pretty okay with. If it does two, two damage to the armor and he heal his actual, like, natural health for two, right. we're still feeling pretty good. But minions like Twilight Drake and uh, Twilight, uh, I'm sorry, as, and as your Drake are really going to help just push this armor down as he edges towards turn 10, where we can actually play Mali Ghost, uh, Dark Bomb, Dark Bomb, Soul Fire. Right. Now, Dog has two Brawls. So, Brawl is an interesting card in this matchup because you might have to pull the trigger on it in situations where the board is barely even filled up mm -hmm. uh, in order yeah. to maybe get even like a 50 50. When you've got two Brawls, one of them might be used very liberally. That's a good point. What's going to be interesting is if um, JJ actually, across maybe the next turn or so, actually like attacks with the Chow and then plays the Hellfire and then follows up with another minion to just push more damage, because all he needs to do is put him to a 25 from turn 10, and he can just end the game, and there's not a lot that the warrior can do about it. I mean, at this point, I think JJ's looking for another Soul Fire from the deck or a Peddler. Those cards would be amazing for him. And uh, he's gonna force Dog to probably use a Brawl right away. Yep. Gotta see the Brawl, and with the weapon equipped, he can kill any minion that survives, so that's kind of nice. to just guarantee a full ball play, but he does take the most damage with it being the Azure Drake that did survive. And it cleans up the armor pretty nicely. So now the Dark Peddler and the. Uh, basically, the Dark Peddler is an awesome card to play this next turn. Yeah, it's hard to say. Uh, it's hard to see a better uh, better card to have at this point. I guess maybe finding a Twilight Guardian would be great. This is why I'm thinking, like, do you actually Hellfire this turn? I don't know. It's a tough one. No, I mean, if you can get it with even just an Azure Drake later in the game, we've seen one Azure Drake, I think. Well, that's a little bit of extra damage. I'm thinking about the Lowly Squire, though. Because the PO is for damage, sure, but you need a minion on board that it will have to survive a turn. And you see that your opponent has a weapon and with two charges. And he hasn't life tapped yet as well, so he can actually yeah. play the Squire and life tap this turn. Yeah, I like that a lot. Wait. Good point. This is really nice. And you've just seen Brawl. He's equipped a weapon, but now there's two minions on board. So he needs <laughs> to play them both. Dog's face when he saw the Squire come down, he's like, oh, really? Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, 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 it, oh wow. it's Perfect. huge. Oh my gosh. What is Brawl? No, it, it's a bit too early considering what you know exists in the opponent's deck. This is way too flimsy of a board to uh, to Brawl alone. But you'll be able to whittle away at it with your weapons over the course of a few turns. And the big amount that has no targets whatsoever, so you should probably just play it right now. Right? Yeah, because uh, at this point as well, like, unless you saw uh, an Alex Straza or something. Oh, hang on. Who's, be who's Big Game Hunter? The Warriors? Uh, no, 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 I mean on the Warlock side. The Warlocks. Yeah, okay, I'll carry on my point then. <laughs> I just saw the Warrior Big Game Hunter as well and was like, oh no, which one's Lothar's talking about? Um, but yeah, cause unless you saw that the Alex Strauss, you're not really afraid of Grom, because Grom's not going to do anything to you at this point in the game. Well, that's an interesting spot, because you play Bran into a Fiery War Axe, you've seen the Death's Bite, so the only thing that will kill this is going to be a mix of Shield Slams and whatnot. The opponent has to have a revenge, shield slams, executes off of AoE. Yep, I kind of like the coil there, just generate an additional 1-1. One, one. It's not, not going to hurt anything, well, it change too much. You don't really want to burn any cards in your hand. Yeah. So that was the main reason to uh, yeah, well, yeah, play that. Yeah, on 10, right? Yeah. Well, these implosions are going to feel a little uh, useless until he sees the revenges come out. He probably knows the type of deck the dog is playing at this point. It's been seen all over the tournament. This type of list is basically everything everyone's playing. That's a really interesting turn, because I thought maybe the Revenge will actually play this turn, yeah. um, just to finish up the finish up the 1-1 one, one minions. But, uh, so maybe with Acolyte of Pain, it's going to be better. With Armor Smiths, 
mm -hmm. uh, an enabler for Grom later. There's many cases where you might need to keep the uh, the AOE damage. I've got the so beast. after the bash and the fourth weapon, JJ's is like, I need to keep drawing through this deck, and I'm getting a little bored here. So just play BGH as a tempo card. Yeah, and he's gonna play the Twilight Guardian straight into another brawl. So, but if the Guardian survives, then the the brawl could be a little bit. A little bit awkward. It is going to remove a lot of the other minions, but I don't think there's an easy way for him to actually kill that Twilight Guardian. If uh, the Twilight Guardian survives, it's going to be a nightmare for Dog. Yeah. Either yeah. the Gang Boss or the Twilight uh, oh. will be a problem for him. Oh, oh wow! There's this huge it, amount of damage. So if he attacks damage. into it now, okay. Never mind. That, be happen. now, that, that will happen. That will happen. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And what, I wonder if Dog's been paying enough attention to the hand to notice that like the first five cards have been in that and have <laughs> not moved all game, you know, from like turn four or something, just haven't even been played. Well, you saw the Emperor come down on a turn, you know, fairly early, so you have to assume he didn't play this randomly. It hit something yeah. that was worth hitting. So whether we're talking about damage spells or Malagos alone, uh, it must have been relevant. Yeah, no one actually attack and drop the Grom now? Oh, he's got Execute. Execute the I don't think hero you, power? I, I don't think you can. Uh, you are allowed to play the Grom when you saw your opponent playing Big Game Hunter so recklessly. Because that means most likely he has a second one. Yeah, right. And your Grom is your win condition. It's the best damage that you need to seal the deal. I have to wonder though how. Uh, I was going to say, like, how Dog thinks he's going to be able to contest this board. This Execute will feel horrible if he ends up using the second one on a Twilight Guardian as opposed to using it on something else that's a bit more impactful. The BGH deals four damage to the Twilight Guardian, puts it in revenge range, uh, and after that point, there's a chance you're able to just clean it up as you play your Grom. Yeah, and the problem is, I imagine Dog isn't expecting 25 damage I think from hand. He, I, Are I you think really expecting, be, like, yeah. that was one of the sickest Emperor hits ever. Like, right. getting two Dart Bombs, the Malagos, and the Soul Fire. Like, that's insane. You don't normally hit all of those. So now the question is, as far as JJ is concerned, okay, nice pick up there. <laughs> I'm guessing it's Hellfire trigger time. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Hellfire comes out, Corruptor will hit. Why not? It's the time you've seen to execute. You've seen everything from this warrior. All you're missing are their shield slams. And especially because of that execute as well. Like, how is it? How is this Corruptor going to die? Because that's the key one, isn't it? If he armors up, oh, he can now he can double armor up. Does that change anything? Well, he's at 22, 27, yeah. so he's out of range. No, wait, it's fine, fine, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never yeah. mind. Alright, so if he plays Justicar, he is going to go up uh, high enough in armor that he will feel safe, but he's going to die right away. Yeah. Yep. Oh my god, this is crazy. Unbelievable. Malagos Warlock for JJ is just completely, I guess, surpassing my expectations of the deck. I I'm surprised to see that the deck is working just as well. Remind me, reminds me of Purple, a uh, dream hack. Uh, brought the deck, said. Yep. Oh yeah, I thought it was going to do very well, and every other pro, of course, followed suit saying, yeah, I thought to bring the deck, I was like totally mining that deck up. Uh, yeah, I just didn't have the cards with me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think about it, man. It was like, yeah, I, I was, it was totally top one. <laughs> so JJ brings it again, surprises everybody with the deck. I want to see if it's able to take a game from Dog's Rogue. From Dog's, Dog's Rogue, let's think about it. How do you want to play this matchup as the war? You just want to play the... The biggest, baddest dragons. Every single turn. Every single turn. Right. So they will be, um, they will not be easily removed by the backstabs and the agents and the fan of knives. Yep. So, so only the biggest HP minions will be played at the beginning of the game in the ideal scenario. And I think the key yeah. is as well not overcommitting into a flurry. Although you do want to play these big guys every single turn, you probably don't want to fill the board depending on what the rogue's hand size looks like and right. what cards you've already seen, of course. And um, but if you don't play into a flurry, but still pressure enough with cards like Twilight Drake, uh, Corruptor as well, like quite high damage, but singled uh, cards, then yeah. you can really pressure the Rogue enough to make awkward plays, which is what you need to do to be able to win the match. Because I think the Rogue game's going to be a little bit quicker than that Control Warrior versus Maligos for the Rogue side, at least. It should be. They're not, uh, not going to want to take their time on that matchup, because if you take your time, then you're going to get hit for 25 from Maligos. And there's not enough healing. To yeah, exactly. I have to wonder though if uh, if Dog is going to, you know, we see the Gadget Sand, it's kind of come back in Rogue decks nowadays. It's a card engine that's very powerful. Um, against a deck like JJ, one of the strongest cards you can find in order to disrupt that tempo of the bodies is the Sap, of course. And it's going to be a Malagos versus Malagos deck. Looks like uh, Double Prep has a good Gadget Sand. <laughs> Pretty good Gadget Sand. Yep. 
but the Mala goes. But JJ's the dog. is gold, so clearly it does more damage. <laughs> Goodness. Dog has a pretty dry early game though, so if uh, if JJ comes out with nothing but just a brand straight up, right? If he opts to play it, um, like he's been doing every single time, you know, if it works, it, it wins me the game, and if it doesn't, then I'll just find something else to do later. Yeah, and the thing is as well, he's like by playing brand, you, you demand like a weird like this with a proc, and the weapon's only on one charge as well. So right. like deadly poison wouldn't be an easy proc. You could maybe like coin a this and then re dagger after hitting. But by doing this, you just the trade-off is that you can potentially get a huge Twilight Drake, which almost demands a sap, or it's just going to be there all game. And if you serve the Drake, you keep your brand, unless he's got the Eviscerate. And if you had it, you probably would have seen it off but, of the corner. The thing is, well, if he saps it, well, it's still in your hand. You just replay it if you want. Um, and also, you know, there's one sap gone this early in the game, which is pretty big for Malagos luck. All right, so JJ does have the coil to deal with that little 1-1. So he's going to be able to handle this board somewhat well. I have to wonder though, are you hoping, are, are you simply going to opt to kill the, because uh, yeah. the battle cry will kill the Vile Yeah, you just yeah, go up the TG. Yeah, you, don't, you don't have any reason to leave that guy up, or that girl up, sorry. This is so much value. When it's intense, it. yeah. It's it's insane when you think about it. It's a 5 4 million for 5 mana, so almost almost as good as it gets when it comes to paying mana for 5 yeah, Like five, a flat five, stack. Yeah, yeah, flat stack, almost as it is. And then, Basically, for the downside of decreasing the vanilla minion by 2 HP, you get 6 damage to a minion in this scenario. This is just insane. Right. And, and the problem now is we've already seen one sap from Dog. Now he has two high high value or high threat minions to deal with. The brand's still a huge problem. Um, and also, the Corrupt is a 5 4. Like we said, he's going to hit him for so much damage. So he's going to go for the backstab with the spell power, clear it up with his face, and leave the token, which is interesting. He chose to take the 5 damage over using the 1 1 there. And the second Corruptor comes out with the coin. Oh, 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 uh, if only the cards line up for him. There is also the interesting play of using the Pillager, the coin, the SI, kill the brand, finally get rid of it, yeah. and keep I that second coin. To. Yeah, he just he has to. Because what this will do is the Pillager, if it, even if it just trades straight up to the Corruptor, um, he's going to gain the coin for Gadgets and next turn, so he has prep and coin to be able to you know, maybe pull something off. Now, you know, Dog's going a little bit low on cards. Low on cards, that doesn't even matter. He's low on health. And that's <laughs> also an issue. That's also a relatively yeah. large issue. I, I mean, yeah. look at look at the damage. There's a hellfire, dark bomb, and an abusive surgeon. And you can use that either as a burst or as a utility spell yeah. in this situation. So dog, dog <laughs> is crazy. he's got the laughter of a man who feels like he shouldn't be laughing. <laughs> yeah, it's like if I don't laugh, I'll cry. Yeah, I think that's the <laughs> issue, isn't it? By the way, how crazy it is that we have two Maligoses. Yeah. In right. a top 16 of a major tournament. Now, I wonder though if Dog will not opt to play the Belcher and uh, kill the 2 1 with his weapon just to get that Malagos and on the coin and then prep Fan of Knives uh, to clean up the board. Is that better than playing the Gadget Sand? I mean, right now, I don't I'd know how much he can achieve. Well, he can Gadget Sand, prep, fan, coin, hero, hero power, power, kill, kill the, right. uh, the uh, big game hunter. And pick up maybe a second prep. And just pick up over anything. <laughs> you know, anything that's going to do anything here. But yeah, like the second prep will be sick. But like, I just think you, the big game hunter is going to get some work done regardless. You may as well just take the damage. And then if by some way JJ doesn't have a lot of burst from hand, then the gadget end is probably going to deal with the 5-4. Yeah. So apparently Dog opts for the Belcher play. I think he's going all in on that Malagos next turn. And considering there's no Lothab and no way to really stop this, yeah. it's a decent play. I don't dislike it. But um, that's a pretty decent pickup. That's seven damage in the, in the hand. Five. So you attack with a five four to the Belcher. You it's got eleven, right? You get four. Yeah, that's eleven. Damage. Yeah. So he's still a little bit off. So I imagine we're probably going to see the two, two four drops this turn. Like, why not? Yeah, why not? I agree completely. Yeah. Because the especially because the Drake's got. Uh, oh, okay. Well, the Drake's not actually got that much health. Still only six because the hand sides. Right, Phantom Knight, everything will be cleared off by this Malagos play again. You know, this is the Phantom Knight's all in. But now I think is, is Dog JJ going to smile at this play because this feels bad. This. Six damage and Phantom Knives. How crazy is that? Now we have and to draw wonder. draw a card, which is important. How does JJ. Oh, that's a lot of verse coming in. If JJ is able to muster just a tiny bit more damage, he could pull it off. Wait, the Drake plus. 
Yeah, it's not quite there. Does he need to Hellfire this turn? Uh, what would you Hellfire? Because you then he can Mally go Soulfire next turn and kill him. But you die. Yeah, but then you're dead, right? If your opponent will have another skull damage. That might be a risk you have Four, to take, 21. to be honest, uh, just, Let me just count it. It's a 21 of the attack, because you are not removing the Maligons, right? One damage from the weapon, so you're going to 20. One at this rate is basically at least 7 damage. With the combo, that's 9. Second eviscerate is 18, so you're still... If you Hellfire, you're in range of double eviscerate. Right. Yeah, I and just think flurry, that and there are a lot of really... Uh, yeah, I, I just think at this them. point, if you can set up lethal, because the game's so close and the rogue's only on three cards. <laughs> and this is oh, okay. I oh, like this. just got Maligos. That works. That, I am loving this. Forcing his opponent to have an answer to his own Maligos. He does, however, have the eviscerate 4-9 plus the weapon hit, or the trade with the, uh, his but own Maligos. But can still win. Right, because you have seven damage in your hand. So a dog bomb top deck, a hellfire top deck, uh, just straight up wins the game. Let's see what JJ picks up. This, this is this very is tense. tense. Yeah. Very tense. Oh. I mean, you can always clean up the like the guy's hand. You can clean up this board if you want, right? And so Drake, the draw hellfire, is fire and Drake. Ooh. There's a cleanup there. JJ can just clean up the board with hellfire, soul fire. Like it's at least. Uh, something he can do. Well, he has to, otherwise the the Malagos is just so threatening. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't see a way uh, like a way out of this. This Malagos lives. Oh, Ooh, that was interesting. That was pretty ballsy. That was, yeah, that was scary. That what, was. Why would you do that? Was that? Just, I think that was just wrong, right? I am. I'm freaked out. Hellfire. I am freaked yeah. out. <laughs> Because yeah. why would you play Soulfire oh, if you goodness. don't plan on playing Hellfire, right? It, well, okay. it's not as if he Soulfired the gadget Zan and then was just like, I'm going to leave Maligos. You know, because then yeah. you're like, well, yeah, yeah. you don't need exactly. to play. Exactly. But like, he Hellfired to clear the ball. I, I'm freaking wow. out right now. I'm like, it's pretty good <laughs> for uh, JJ that it lined up this way. Now, however. It's pretty good. It would have been disastrous if it didn't. I, I want to see what JJ can do here. I mean, he's got only a second Hellfire to deal with this board, right? The implosion can help a little bit, but... Well, it has to clear up the Azure Drake, right? It has to be the target. But if Luck. it hits for three... Oh. It's four! Wow. All right, okay. Dog still has some card draw. Picks up a Deadly Poison, so he's got a decent amount of damage. Two draws oh, flurry. for a flurry. Be huge. Don't you first play Deadly Poison just to see the... Never mind. Yeah, it's zero mana, so you're, always, you're gonna do it anyway, right? You don't have spell power to kill the Drake regardless. Mm -hmm. So if, you, if you're planning on flurrying... Like, this is the problem now, because Shiv draws him two cards. But so he's gonna, yeah, this is right, because if he gets Blade Flurry, he can still clear the board. Right. And the Shiv draws him oh, first. Oh, Blade Flurry. Wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I was thinking about the Falnos. This is why I was thinking maybe about the Dead Poison first. But this was way better. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. was way better from, from Dog. Really well played. So JJ here needs to pick up an answer to something because right now he's about to lose the game and the coil might give oh. him another card. It means he can roll three. And so, oh. oh, wow. That, that is was it. Close. JJ goes down in the Malagos mirror match. That was a really intense game. I don't even know. But what could have... What if that Soulfire would have discarded... Oh, Hellfire. that was crazy. I, I want to say he didn't get punished by this exact play, but he ended up losing the series, so I guess uh, justice was served. It was a really good game, though, because like both players identifying exactly when they need to commit to Maligos. I loved it. And when you have to throw away that Soulfire in Hellfire, normally you're like, well, I'm playing Maligos, so I want to go face. But instead, he used it to actually just clear up the minions because he knew that was the way to continue the game and survive right. longer. Really high level play from both players there. Other than maybe the, the kind of ropey soul fire there. Other <laughs> yeah. than that one point, very high level play. <laughs> but an enjoyable game to cast yeah. as well. I'll say that much, right? I didn't expect to see a no druid lineup, first of all. So that's very, uh, it's kind of refreshing to see. And Dog's going to be moving on to the top eight with this, uh, with this set. And Super JJ relegated to the, I don't want to say loser's bracket, but basically no, he's gone. Uh, he's <laughs> made it. Oh, 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 will not be taking this okay, tournament. His teammates, and Dog yeah. keeps his chance of getting this uh, maybe first place win that he wants to get later on. By the way, that was the toughest group to go with. Yeah. Like, right. I mean, Dog still can get himself the, he still has to beat Life Coach. No, 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 no. They're, they're both, both through. Through. The Life Coach and Dog advanced. Right, but in top eight. They'll yeah, have yeah, to yeah. fight off against possibly each other, right? Uh, I don't think so. I think, the, I think the first place... First place uh, so Life Coach will be matched against, against the second place from a different group. Yes. All right, Initially. so Dog will be yeah. against another but, first place. But also, in that group, both players took Rogue as well. And the, the oh. two players that made it Let's out... See the bracket right now. Yeah. Life Coach against Ness, Dog uh, against Zelay. So a American showdown. And they will have outer <laughs> waiting for his opponent in right. Pokorovat 
uh, waiting against his opponent as well. So the last group, the group D, will determine the last two places uh, for the day three of Insomnia 57 True Super Championships, number two. Yeah, that's going to be a really intense uh, intense game. It's tomorrow should be a crazy day, honestly. Yeah. The, 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 the brackets are stacked, despite the fact that we still had to trim down uh, from all these players, it turns out. Some of the best have cropped up to the top, as expected. And, uh, well, we'll be back after a 10-minute break, guys, for the Group D, which will be the last group to cast before we move on to Top 8 tomorrow. So stay tuned. We'll be back in a 10-minute break.